since last winter, we got a little assortment of salad tomatoes in one of those little clamshell plastic cases from the uh, grocery store. And I said, man, those things are good. Let's plant the seeds. So we did. And now we have multiple plants bearing these delicious, sweet grape tomatoes. Now it's getting later in the season, or in the summer, but I'd like to start another round of tomatoes for fall. So can we start these things again without having to go through the long process of growing seeds? Yes, we can. In today's video, I'm gonna show you three ways to start tomatoes from cuttings. Now we have our cuttings, and it's time for method number one. I call this the granny method. This is like what my grandmother would do with plants. She would take cuttings and she would do what grandmothers always do, stick them in water. So what I do first is I take off any, any blooms that I see, any little forming tomatoes. We don't want it trying to do this right now. We want them to make roots. Roots are the primary job not making fruit. And so I'm gonna take some of the leaves off. There we go. Cut to like below a node. And then these guys go right into a jar of water. This usually works with tomatoes. Usually you can stick them right in the water and they grow just fine. For example, here's some that I did a couple of weeks ago. These are Everglades tomato cuttings. And you can see they made some roots. You can also see that the leaves have gotten rather yellow because they're starving. <laughs> There's nothing in water for them to feast on. So what we'll do with these is pot them up. It takes a couple of weeks for them to make roots. And all you gotta do is get those, get those roots going. And once you have the roots going, they look pretty decent you can stick them out in pots, but you still shouldn't put them directly into full sun. They're probably not ready for that, so I put them in about half sun, and I would also feed them something, anything. And with tomatoes, remember that you can plant them pretty deep, and they'll just make more roots. Probably if you dumped a little bit of your coffee into the water in the morning, you'd give them just a little bit of food, but I haven't done that, I've thought about it. I've dumped coffee in house plants all the time. I figure they, they sometimes need a little pick-me-up. I'm like looking at this plant sitting in a pot and going, man, that poor thing. If I was just sitting there all day, I would want some coffee. Stick them in, pot them up. Now these guys will be ready to plant out in the garden in a couple of weeks. Just kind of adjust them to the sunlight when they come out of the shade, it's going to be a bit of a start for them. They're not gonna like that. If you put them right in the full sun, they'll, they'll get burned and they won't be happy if they have not been under much light indoors. They have to adjust. So that's method number one, the granny method. Just stick them in water and wait, and when they start to put roots on and Got a couple inches of roots, stick them in something. Now we're gonna go on to method number two, but for that, we have to head out to the garden. These are Everglades tomatoes right here. These are a sprawling tomato that resists being trellised or tied. It is a wild, rambling type of tomato. And what happens over the course of a season is towards the center of them, they often start to die back. They crawl further and further out from the middle and wilts will start to take them and leaves will die and they keep crawling. If you help them out by rooting them into the ground, as my friend Mart reminded me the other day, he's like, just bury them into the ground and get them, get them going so they root further along the stem and then they outrun the disease and they just keep crawling. You basically are making this huge tomato ground cover. And I said, yes, that's right, Mart. They do, they root where they touch, but you can help this along immensely and, and train them out from the center 
I'm gonna just take this little bit of fruit off here. It's not like we don't have enough. We have gallons of it. And that section right there gets stuck into the ground. Just like that. And if I'm afraid it's not, it's not gonna stay, I could put a block down on it, put a piece of wood, a weight, whatever. If it's not holding down to the ground, you can do this. This is technically called layering. This is like taking a cutting without doing the cutting. You're burying it into the ground and it will root down there from the stem because as we all know, tomatoes like to root from the stems. And then later, this stem doesn't even matter. We could just cut this off if we want to or it could die back or whatever. This becomes its own distinct plant and it will start sprawling outwards from here. Now, if you live in a place that gets abundant rainfall or you have soil that holds a good amount of moisture and your humidity levels are pretty high, you can not worry about the actual layering bit of it and burying it in. You could just take your cuttings like this, cut off some cuttings and stick them directly into the ground. We did this all the time in the Caribbean. My wife would just go around to our tomato plants, cut pieces of them off, stick them into the ground and the moist clay and the high humidity ensured that they did not dry out before they rooted. The main thing that kills cuttings is them drying out. There's also a possibility of them rotting, but generally that's not the main problem. It's the drying out. So if we get regular rainfall and it stays nice and moist and the humidity stays high, this will probably root and become another happy Everglades tomato. But if we get a dry week, all bets are off. You can help it along a little bit by shading it. Uh, down in the Caribbean, we would take palm fronds and cross them over new transplants and cuttings that had been stuck in the ground. But I'm just gonna let this go and we'll see what happens. Now we'll do method number three. This is the mini greenhouse method. And this is one of the methods I talk about in my book, Free Plants for Everyone. We use this for everything in our nursery. Anything that needs that extra little bit of humidity, extra little bit of care, and you don't have the finances to set up a big greenhouse, mist house, all that nonsense, you really can do this at home for next to nothing. And you could propagate things you wouldn't even think like lemons, yep, they work in the mini greenhouse method. So for tomatoes, it's a cinch because tomatoes root really, really easily. So you're gonna cut your side shoots off like we did before, but this time we are going to stick our cuttings directly into soil. And now you see they're, they're wilting, they look terrible. Don't worry, they will recover. I cut off a decent amount of the leaves because we don't want them losing too much water through the leaves but they're not going to lose much once we do this okay so we've got two there and we will divide these guys out later when they root but all you got to do is stick them into a container like that this is so easy what this does is it keeps them from drying out. This makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna stick a stick in here. Since I am already in the woods, it's super easy. You just need a stick in there to kind of support the top to make sure that it doesn't come down on the heads of our young tomatoes. So, you zip them in there. Sometimes I'll actually just give them a little extra. There, I have some carbon dioxide. Plants love carbon dioxide. Now that is my little mini greenhouse. This goes in the shade. You can put it on a sunny windowsill. You could put it underneath a tree. Don't put it in a place where the sun is going to hit it because that causes that greenhouse effect and you'll get cooked tomatoes. You don't want cooked tomatoes. The soil is moist in here. The moisture in the soil is enough to humidify the air. Don't do this with dry soil, it won't work. But moist soil will humidify the air. You don't have to water it, you just close it, you wait a couple of weeks, these things will root, they'll actually start to grow in there and 
you'll be able to pull them out, plant them into your garden, pot them up, whatever you want to do. Just remember, adjust them to the light. Bring them into the sun slowly. Don't just stick them right out into full sun if they've been rooting in the shade. They don't usually like that. If I were going to root more difficult stuff with this method, like citrus or blueberries or mulberries, that kind of thing, I would use some rooting hormone. You can buy rooting hormone powder, which stimulates root growth on plants. And for that kind of a plant that's gonna take a few months in here and it's a little reticent to root, I would do it. But on tomatoes, they root so easily, you don't need it. You don't have to waste your rooting powder on the tomatoes. They're just gonna root whether you put it on or not. That's it. That's three methods. All of them are simple. Some of them are simpler than others. The granny method is very simple. Sticking it right in the garden is very simple. The most effective for lower humidity environments and hot summers, the mini greenhouse method. So granny method, layering slash sticking it right in the ground and the mini greenhouse method, these three will allow you to duplicate that tomato plant that you love without having to start it from seeds again and these will fruit faster than if you started them from seeds. They already think they're grown-ups, they are ready to go. Now you can learn a lot more about how to propagate just about everything in my popular book, Free Plants for Everyone. I will put the link to that below this video. Thanks for joining me. If you have any other methods on tomato propagation and you wanna share them in the comments, go ahead and share them. It's a free-for-all, it's a food fight, it's a lot of fun. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Does it look good? I think so. There's two back lit. I think it looks good. Okay. You ready? Wait, move your hand back a little. No, no, further out of the frame. More, more, more. Good. Go.